this video will tell you how to finally get lean enough to see your abs and how long it'll take you. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. To lose belly fat and see your abs, there's a few keys that you need to focus on. The first one is diet, and more specifically, getting into a calorie deficit. It turns out that weight loss is mostly diet related, not so much exercise. The old saying of you can't outtrain a bad diet is true when it specifically comes to seeing your abs for the first time. To give you an example of this, a study from 2012 by Foster Schubert and colleagues compared four groups. One, a control group that did absolutely nothing. Two, a diet group that was put on a low calorie diet. Three, a cardio group that performed 225 minutes of moderate intensity cardio per week. And four, a group that did both the low calorie diet and also engaged in 225 minutes of cardio per week. The results? Well, while just exercising did cause some weight loss, much larger weight loss was observed in the group that was simply put on a low calorie diet. However, the largest weight loss was observed in the group that both did the diet and also engaged in consistent exercise. So just focusing on working out and out working a bad diet won't do it. By far the main thing to focus on diet wise is to establish a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is when you're intaking fewer calories than your body is burning. Because your body needs more energy than you're consuming through food, it will need to break down some of its tissues, in this case fat, fat in order to provide more energy. And that is what a calorie deficit achieves. It causes your body to break down some of your fat tissue, leading to fat loss. However, we specifically want to lose fat in order to reveal our abs. We don't want to lose muscle. And if we lose weight too fast, we do risk losing muscle. And importantly, your abs are actually a muscle called the rectus abdominis. So if we lose weight too fast and lose muscle in the process, you may reveal a six pack that isn't as muscular or impressive as you might have hoped. Conversely though, if we slow down weight loss too much, we are risking wasting time as we could have lost that fat more quickly. So what is an appropriate rate of weight loss? Well, based on a recent review paper, losing about half a percent to 1% of your body weight per week is an adequate pace. Losing much faster than this might risk muscle loss. Importantly, I would urge you to consider your overall lifestyle and your circumstances when considering how fast you should lose weight. For instance, if you're higher in body fat, you might be able to lose weight faster and a little bit closer to that 1% of body weight per week. On the other hand, if you're quite lean already, losing a percent might lead to muscle loss and you should stay closer to half a percent of body weight per week. Another huge consideration is your lifestyle. If your lifestyle is conducive to losing weight, for example, you live on your own, your lifestyle stress is pretty low, you're in control of your food environment, you can dictate what you ingest every day pretty easily, then you might be able to lose weight a little bit faster. However, on the other hand, if you're busy, you have children, you have high stress, you're not really in control of your food environment at all times, some of your foods are harder to track in terms of calories and macronutrients, you might be better off aiming for a slower rate of weight loss at around half a percent of weight loss per week. In my opinion, if you're in any doubt, stick closer to half a percent a week. Losing half a percent of your body weight per week is still plenty and will result in plenty of weight loss if you stick to it for long enough. Ultimately, you need to aim for a rate of weight loss that is sustainable for you that you can stick to for weeks and months until you reach your goal. Now, you might have figured out how fast you want to lose weight. The question is, how many calories should you be consuming in order to lose weight at that pace? Well, here are three easy steps you can follow to determine your target calorie intake. Step one, calculate your maintenance calories. This is essentially how many calories you need to consume to just maintain your body weight. Essentially, it's an equilibrium between how many calories you consume and how many calories your body burns. So you'll neither put on weight, nor will your body have to break down fat tissues, for example, in order to release more energy. To determine your maintenance calories, use any of the total daily energy expenditure calculators available online. While none of them are perfectly accurate, they will get you in the right ballpark. Importantly, before you do this step, make sure you stick around in this video and watch the training part so that you can accurately fill out the calculator. Step two, determine how large your deficit should be. Take your percentage of weight loss per week goal and multiply that by your body weight. For example, if you're aiming to lose 1% of your body weight per week and you weigh 200 pounds, Multiply 200 pounds by 0.01. As a rule of thumb, to lose a pound of fat, you need to be in a deficit of 3,500 kilocalories over time. Or for a kilogram of fat, that would be 7,700 kilocalories. So to lose two pounds per week, multiply the number of pounds per week by how many calories it takes to lose a pound of fat, 
and you have your weekly calorie deficit. In this case, that's two pounds times 3,500 calories, giving you a weekly deficit of 7,000 kilocalories. A simple approach is just to divide this weekly deficit by seven, there are seven days in a week, and that gives you your daily calorie deficit. And finally, step three, establish your actual calorie intake. Simply subtract your target daily deficit from your maintenance calories and you have your target calorie intake for each day. Congratulations, you've established a calorie deficit and you're on your way to losing fat and seeing your abs. Let me give you a few more tips on diet to make sure that you're maintaining muscle mass as best you can and to make the diet a little bit easier. My first tip is to have enough protein. This will help with both muscle retention and potentially with staying full and not being as hungry during the diet. As a minimum, aim for 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. This is based on a meta-regression from 2017 by Morton and colleagues, finding the best muscle growth at this protein intake or above. Ideally, spread this protein out across three meals per day at least. My second tip is to have plenty of fruits and vegetables within your diet. Generally, foods with a lower energy density and with a higher fiber content will one, both be healthier for you, and two, make it easier to stay full during a diet. And tip number three is to try and set up your food environment for success. Try and establish a daily structure within your meals that you're happy with and can consistently stick to. Building habits makes weight loss easier. Alongside this, make your diet foods, the foods that you're supposed to eat while you're dieting, more easily available. Make them visible on your kitchen counter make them easier to see in your fridge. Make them easier to have by cutting down on the time spent cooking, for example. Pick convenience foods wherever you can, which cuts down on the amount of time you need to spend cooking, making it easier to stick to your diet. And conversely, if you can, try not to have the foods that typically throw you off your diet around the house. By not having them around your house, you're making the barrier to entry to going off diet a little bit higher, making it less likely. So without relying on willpower quite as much, it'll make it easier for you to stick to your diet. The second big key when it comes to finally losing fat and seeing your abs is working out. Working out has two primary objectives when it comes to seeing your abs. The first is to keep your hard-earned muscle around. The abs are a muscle like any other, and specifically, they are the rectus abdominis muscle. The second goal of working out is to increase energy expenditure, making your calorie deficit larger. Going back to what creates a calorie deficit, this can be achieved either through reducing how much you eat, lowering energy intake, or through increasing energy expenditure, increasing how many calories you burn or a combination thereof. To maintain your muscle during a cut, try training each muscle group at least twice a week, maybe two full body sessions in the gym with five to 10 sets per week per muscle. You can certainly do more than this and it will probably help with muscle retention, but especially for beginners, this is a great starting spot. While protein intake can definitely help with retaining muscle and keeping you full, lifting weights actually has the single biggest impact on how much muscle you retain during a diet. Additionally, consider doing exercises specifically targeted at your abs. Growing your abs will make them more visible, just like any other muscle group. By and large, there are two ways I like to work out for fat loss and they need to fit within your lifestyle. The first is to download a step tracker onto your phone and aim for a specific step count each day. Ideally, somewhere between six and 12,000 steps daily. Your exact goal will depend on how much time you have, how busy your lifestyle is, how generally physically active you are already in daily life, and more. The important thing is to set a feasible, sustainable goal. Walking has many benefits. It can be sociable, you can go for walks with friends or family, or you can even take a call while walking. It exposes you to sunlight, which helps with circadian rhythm regulation, and there are plenty of studies finding that more walking is generally beneficial for your health. And importantly, doing more steps can have a really meaningful impact on your weight loss. Going from doing next to no steps per day, for example, to consistently doing 10,000 steps per day can result in a roughly additional four to 600 calories burned each day, adding up to around a pound or more of weight loss per week. If you wanted to calculate how many calories you burn through walking, a good rule of thumb is one kilocalorie per kilogram of body weight per kilometer walked. The second way I recommend walking out for fat loss is helpful if you don't have enough time to get a lot of steps in and need to boost activity overall. In this case, I would recommend formal cardio sessions. Generally, when it comes to pure fat loss, I would recommend cardio forms that are eccentric less and impactless. But ultimately, whatever you can consistently fit within your lifestyle is going to be important. It needs to be sustainable so that you repeat it over time and it can have an impact on your fat loss. My recommendations are to set a calorie goal for each time you walk out, especially on gym machines like the elliptical machine 
or a rowing machine, that can be very simple. I think the best forms of cardio that you can do within the gym or even outside of it are going to be the elliptical machine and the cycling machine, as neither of these have a meaningful eccentric or impact component. Alternatively, any sort of group activity like a team sport or a group class can be a great way to get more physical activity in and boost your overall energy expenditure. This is helpful because you also get to be sociable at the same time and overall boost your health. One good recommendation might be to do four cardio sessions a week, each time aiming for about 300 kilograms calories burned. This could lead to an additional third of a pound lost each week, which doesn't sound like much, but if you repeat that over three months, for example, that would be an additional four pounds lost. Ultimately though, the impact of working out on weight loss itself is secondary compared to diet. However, in general, increasing physical activity has many benefits for overall health. For instance, a recent meta-analysis on the impact of moderate and vigorous physical activity on overall health has found benefits reaching up to several hours a week. So working out a little bit more is going to have positive impacts for your health and also a positive impact on your weight loss. Take those recommendations and incorporate them into your diet and workout regimen. Now, the final question that you want me to answer is how long is it going to take for you to see your abs? Before we can answer that question, we need to answer the question of what body fat do we need to be in order to first see our abs? Well, for most men in my coaching experience, you will need to be around 15 to 20% body fat to first start seeing some decent ab definition. But to have very solid abs, you'll likely need to be closer to about 10 to 12%. For most women, they will typically start seeing their abs around 25% body fat largely owing to differences in body fat distribution between men and women. Women generally store less fat around their waist. But most women will need to be closer to about 16 to 20% body fat in order to have a solid set of abs. In both cases, besides simply losing body fat, direct ab training will help you. In my experience, it can make your abs visible at a few percentage points higher. So we need to reach down to these body fat ranges for men and women respectively to see your abs. The final question we need to answer is, what body fat percentage are you? Unfortunately, most readily available body fat assessment methods that you might have at home or that are easily accessible aren't especially accurate. As a very rough estimate, take a look at this body fat chart. Which body does your body look closest to? I'll give you a few seconds for you to figure this out. Now that you've decided which body looks most like yours, here's a rough estimate of how long it'll take you to get a visible set of abs. This is assuming you lose around 0.5 to 1% of body weight per week, as I outlined earlier in this video. Before I end this video, let me give you a few broad takeaways. First, lose body weight at a pace of about 0.5 to 1% of body weight per week, depending on your lifestyle and initial body fat. Have plenty of protein, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, and this will help you in your journey. The way to lose weight is a calorie deficit. Establish your maintenance calories and then eat below that. Weigh yourself consistently to see whether or not you're losing weight at the desired pace. If you're not, consider decreasing your calorie intake by about 1 to 200. Instead of looking at individual weigh-ins, look at 7-day averages. This will wash out normal fluctuations in body weight that you have day to day. To help with weight loss, be physically active and lift a couple of times a week as well. Step count targets are great to help with weight loss. But if you're pressed for time, cardio sessions can work great too. In order to make your abs more visible, include direct ab training within your routine. 5 to 10 sets a week per muscle is going to be a great starting point for most beginners. And finally, depending on your starting body fat, getting abs might take longer than you think. But do not let that discourage you. Provided you do it right and maintain your weight loss afterwards, you only need to lose that weight once. That is the video, broke down the science on how to lose fat and finally see your abs, and how long it will take you. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below, comment, and subscribe. I know a lot of you aren't subscribed, and I would really appreciate your support. If you'd like me to cover any other topics, leave a comment down below letting me know what you'd like me to cover. If you'd like me to coach you to lose weight and finally see your abs, take a look at the link above, and we could enter a coaching relationship. And with that being said, have a phenomenal day, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.